Hello and welcome to Last Time On. This is the podcast for people who want to watch all this prestige television, but who's got time for it? You know I don't. Hey, and I'd just like to say welcome everybody to the last episode of Last Time On. It's been so great being here. This is our final episode of the podcast. I'd like to thank what? everyone for oh, all your Vic, support no, 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 and membership no, no, and everything. No, this is the we, very, there won't be another episode uh, of Last there, Time there, On. There ever. will. There is? Wait, what? No, we got, we no. got, we got at least two more episodes of SG1, Vic. Oh, that's what? true. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, we have our recap episode, and then we have our go back episode. Oh, oh, there's yeah. more SG one. Yep. Yay! There's more oh, SG1 there's more SG one. Damn it! <laughs> and then I assume we move on to Stargate well. SG two. So, well, it depends on who wins, which we should give a little bit of a recap of what's going to happen here. So, we're going to do this episode. We're watching season ten, episode twenty. It is technically the series finale, according to our rules. Uh, Unending, the irony. So, we've got that next week. We'll be back, and we will be reading over a synopsis of the events of SG-1 and going over our scoring. This is going to be a synopsis as told by the LTO crew. Well, we're going to find one online and read it. We're going to, yeah, oh, we're going to okay. find a synopsis online. We will read through it collectively and find out what we got right and wrong over the course <laughs> of the show. Maybe we'll find out more about, you know, snazers or something. I don't know. <laughs> we, we don't know yet. We find out the big bads we missed, find out the alien species we missed entirely, mm-hmm. find out what was going on with Rob Picardo. All possible. <laughs> we don't know. What happened uh, to Jonas? I want to know what happened to Jonas and Kowalski. I want the Jonas yeah. and Kowalski show. It'd be the most boring show ever. And then after we have context, we're going to go back and catch the one episode that we really needed to watch. The be- best episode of the show that we didn't see. Uh, now, it doesn't have to be the best. It could by... be the one where they fight ninjas. It could be the one where we they fight ninjas. You need to see the ninja episode. Yeah. <laughs> I, think yeah, I did, I did go through we'll it. We'll watch the ninja episode or if the gatekeeper is insistent on one. <laughs> That's not Heroes Part 1. We'll, <laughs> we'll go back and watch that. I did um, I did go through IMDb and I found, I, I, lost, I wrote it down somewhere, but the highest rated episode of SG-1 according to IMDb was a 9.5. So Ooh, wow. part one, <laughs> it was not, I'll have to find it later, but I, I think this is the one. Well, whatever, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get there. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do that. And then at the end of that, go back episode, whoever got the most predictions, right. According to our read through mm-hmm. next episode, we'll pick the next show. We will go on a two week hiatus to allow us time to secure it, the media <laughs> and begin reviewing it as it were. So that way we can actually record episodes. Yeah, going to hit have to hit up eBay because Viper's not streaming anywhere. <laughs> exactly. So, but that's all stuff for the next episode. Right now, we've got season 10, episode 20, unending in front of us. This is technically the series finale. <laughs> it's very surprising. It's only 30 it minutes. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They didn't give it a feature length. I mean, this this show was around for almost a decade, and yeah, they couldn't give it the, the normal the 45. That's, wow. Uh, this must not have been planned to be the season finale. They got canceled abruptly, maybe. Yeah. Well, so I, I, it's something that we can do research on after we read our synopsis next week, and I'll probably make a point of having a source ready while we're reading over that synopsis. So that way we can find out for certain i got to imagine though that the plan was to do at least another season or i know that there were a couple of movies so maybe those movies were part of the plan from the get-go but this definitely feels like a we made an episode that happened to be a end of a season episode and then we tacked on five minutes of a bunch of parables to make (laughs) it feel like it was a series finale Uh, yeah I, i have i have words when we get there Oh, and also next week for that episode, I believe we might be able to get the gatekeeper on to give us a live recap of our recap. <laughs> That'd be lovely. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if you can call in. She can call in on our phone if that'll work. We'll, we'll figure it out. I don't we'll know. figure it out. Yeah. There's options. We have options. All right. So we open up uh, um, with the and- whole team. We open in the media American Gladiators. Yes. Yeah. Stick fun. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. 
We know that we find out later that this is the Protutheus, maybe the Prothetheus. It's the Odyssey uh, because this, yeah, this is the not, Odyssey. It's not the new Prometheus. Spaceship. So, new <laughs> spaceship. Mitchell and Teal are practicing their ambujitsu. And then um, I love this. We get Dan Jacks walking into the mess hall to a surprise birthday party, and he just immediately is like, "Nope." Oh, and Vala <laughs> chases him, and she's like, "I was bored, and they wouldn't believe it's my birthday again." Oh, I love Vala. Vala has been a ray of sunshine injected <laughs> right into the heart of this show. Yeah, and she is so different than what I was used to seeing her as on Farscape. She because she was completely up. She was the stick in the mud, no fun girl on on Farscape. But Here she is, too much fun girl, dangerously too much fun girl. <laughs> I I have known these people in real life. I enjoy watching yeah. them on a TV show. <laughs> uh but i did appreciate i Vala. understand yeah, i appreciate vala's threat here last time i got this board i took hostages and dan jacks is like i know i was there <laughs> i i have both been this person and been the victim of this person because like it used to be a thing whenever we would go out to eat with friends at chili's or applebee's or whatever someone would sneak off and tell the waiter it's my birthday and then i've also <laughs> been the guy who who would be like hey it's his birthday <laughs> bring him a cake so yeah <laughs> yeah so thor shows up as humanity arrives on the planet they were heading to oh to really give humanity the the key they give humanity the keys to the galaxy because they're going to retire to florida to live out their days <laughs> no they're going to canada getting some of that assisted suicide <laughs> yeah but hey it's thor yeah we're seeing yeah. thor it's we didn't get his answering machine. We got actual Thor. We, actu this time. we get actual Thor Vala for about up, thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah, and Vala brings up a question that I've had about the Asgard. She says, "How do you tell them apart?" To to which Daniel Jackson says, "The voice," which it, is awesome because Dan Jackson is the voice of Thor. Yes. Yep. Glad you got that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, Ben, we quickly find out that their retirement to Florida to live out their days is a very small amount of days. Their biology is degrading with no recourse, so mass suicide it is. And uh, Dr. Thorvorkian here explains Thor that he will still show up in spinoffs, but only as a hologram. Yeah. So the, the, the thing here we find out last time on, the Asgardians, in a effort to try and live forever... And here is where we find out who wants to live forever. Come on, you ace! You want to live forever? It is the alien greys, and by doing so, they created a... Across the board, everybody is dying, and there is no way to save them, and we don't, we don't want to run the risk of somebody else finding all of our stuff. So even though we're not entirely sure humanity's ready for it, here you go, kids. Here's the key yep. to the Corvette. Yep. <laughs> Don't destroy the universe. <laughs> the Ori show up, and the Asgards immediately blow up their planet in response. Yes. I <laughs> was shocked. I was just like, they're like, oh, there's a huge energy spike coming from the planet. And I'm all like, sweet, some Asgardian lasers are about to blow up these Ori. Nope. Yeah, because nope, we know they, they had, Death Star themselves. We know they had ships powerful enough to just, you know, wipe away a yeah, old they, spaceships they have the the gould eraser yeah, so. yeah. it's just like it's the... they don't even shoot at the ori once <laughs> they're just like no mm -hmm. finger on no, the button up. and we know their weapons are effective because we see their weapons which mm -hmm. are just pasted onto the odyssey destroy <laughs> two of the motherships with relative ease yeah mm -hmm. hey, how, you know what how is defending say... themselves not an option <laughs> I'm going to say last time on, one of the Asgard is a little, uh, you know, they, they got to be go going a little crazy in their old age. I got to say, it's on Thor's bucket list to blow up a planet. And he's all running yeah. out of time. He's all just like, fuck it, I'm out. Boom! <laughs> well, if nothing else, Jafar got his planet-destroying weapon here. He did. You did. He did. <laughs> There's definitively <laughs> a planet-destroying weapon. <laughs> also, they're, I'm really glad that it was only Carter and Thor in the room when they were talking about this, because they're like, Humanity is the only people we can trust. And it's like, what about the Tokra? What about the Jaffa? And there's like, fuck those guys. Oh, yeah, yeah Teal sort of was like, well, fuck you too. Well, actually, Teal would understand because yeah, he... his people were kind of assholes. So, yeah. Um, 
Carter notices something unusual when they're in hyperspace, so they drop out, and they're immediately caught up with by the two remaining Ori motherships. Mm -hmm. We've got our own little 33 here, which oh, is fun. Yeah, I was going to say that this was the plot that, what is his name, Ryan Johnson? Oh, they, they also, yeah, The, the Last the Jedi. Yeah. yeah, yeah. this is where The Last Jedi got their plot from. <laughs> now, one thing that's going to wrinkle your brain here... The episode of Battlestar Galactica aired before this episode of Stargate. Three years Because before. I checked that shit. Yeah. And it's also <laughs> just like, okay, they were both on sci-fi. Why doesn't SG-1 look better? Well, that's a good point. Yeah. I don't know. I'm guessing most of the budget from SG-1. All that MacGyver money went out of SG-1 and into Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> yeah. Or just, hey... We're 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 willing to throw the money at the fancy new show and not at this old legacy show that we saved from Showtime. Showtime. But also, if I'm the, you know, maybe they explain like we can't repair our shields where we're in hi uh in hyperspace, but if they were able to turn the the Prometheus or not the Prometheus the Odyssey around, Odyssey. blow up one, jump away, why can't they just turn around, blow up another one, jump away? You know, okay, yeah. shields back to one hundred, drop blow them up problem solved yeah it, it requires a lot of hand waviness and a lot of what's the word i'm looking for the term when you just shut your brain off chin of disbelief that one yeah well hold on to your su 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 suspension of disbelief because it's about to take a fucking beating <laughs> yeah. see i was thinking that this was going to be the setup for this big massive final space battle that i was hoping for that if they're or I are tracking them through hyperspace, that they were going to call up so all the friends we made along the way, you know, the Guo Uld, the Jonas people, yeah. and tell them to set up an ambush, get every every ship with a gun, and then drop out there and have a massive space battle. But instead, we got that would be oh, ending. Yeah, and this episode is notably unending. <laughs> instead, I feel like we got the dollar store version of all good things, kind of. <laughs> but also, it, it, it had the same vibe to me. They, they are able uh, to figure out we're being tracked, and General yeah. Landry immediately tries to pull the Janeway maneuver, blow up the ship. Oh, yeah. yeah. But there's a whole bunch of stuff that, at this conversation here about the ancients and the priors using ancient magics right <laughs> under their noses or something, which sounds like it's against the rules for the Ori now. And yeah. the Ori and the priors might be separate things at this point, though it's kind of implied it sounds like there was a resolution to our seasonal plot and we completely missed it. So Ben, I have to ask, what happened her? What the hell happened? Can't explain. But I got the ban. Well, can't explain. <laughs> we know that somebody important was leading the Ori forces. Somebody yes. who's no longer being mentioned or referenced at all. <laughs> Yep. Mm. That is Vala's daughter was leading them. Oh. They don't bring her up. So what I'm going to say is Vala's daughter figures out that the Ori, the Ori aren't the cool people the ancients were. And the Ori were using the ancients power and pretending they were, were gods when really they weren't. So it, it looks like it's about to be this huge pitched battle. And her daughter's just like, hey, no, we're actually just collectively piecing out we found a different <laughs> different galaxy see all you suckers later bye mom don't wait up <laughs> and they all left okay nice i've got some information for this later at the end of the show but oh yeah. okay anyway. no but, spoilies Dick. it's not a spoiler at all it's, we've it's watched the finale <laughs> point, yeah but when, once we get to the the scoring yeah just remind okay. me okay Okay. 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 <laughs> so yeah, they're pretty sure it's the Asgard technology, but they can't disconnect it uh, in the time that they get after they drop out of hyperspace. So they roll over to a planet with a Stargate, and they send everyone that they can back home, while SG One will defend themselves or blow up the ship. Yeah, yep, they, they send all the extras the home. Them. Yeah, they 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 save. It's like whatever we do, we have to make sure the red shirts live. So they beam all the red shirts down to the planet. But Carter gets me, has an idea. The thing that gets me right here is they don't like we know they have like the the new crystal technology where that can hold like huge amounts of data. Yeah. It comes up twice here where they're not like, okay, we're gonna send all the extras home, but we can't we can't let all of the the Asgardian, you know, knowledge and technology die. Put as many schematics 
and everything mm-hmm. onto some crystals and send it home with the extras. Yeah, each of those extras can carry at least one thumb drive with them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How detailed are these drawings? At what point does it fucking mm-hmm. matter? Like, they should just be vectors, and it doesn't matter. They should be relatively low file sizes, but mm-hmm. fuck me. All right. <laughs> we also find out that they have three months. So, oh, sorry. So, Carter has an idea. We don't get to hear what it is before it's executed. And right before the ship gets blown to shit. She freezes time. Some time dilation. Relativity, baby. <laughs> Jafar, this isn't a time to talk about time. We don't we have, don't the, have time. the time. We, we do have the time because we didn't do a cold <laughs> open this episode. So, actually, I just watched Interstellar for the first time like three really? weeks ago. Wow. Yeah. I've never seen it. It's good. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's really worth your time. It, it, it came out in that I've got a period of my life when I was traveling very extensively for work. And I just missed out on a ton of pop culture. Yeah, same I here. just, I've got, yeah, 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 yeah. He's kind of the same reason, but not quite. Anything that came out in 2006, 2007, I'm catching up on still. So yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of movies at that time. <laughs> yeah, I missed from like 2011 to like 2016. That is about the five years of pop culture that I just missed. Yeah. Ow. So Interstellar was in that gap. And I finally just got around to watching it. And that time dilation is a major plot point. And then I actually, this morning, finished reading a book that also had some time dilation in it. Oh, nice. Uh, what which book? was Project Hail Mary. Interesting. Okay. Which Scott from Gray 17, our friends in the Babylon 5 podcasting community, had recommended to me when we were recording our Voice of the Resistance V podcast. Ooh. And I finally got around to reading it, and I started it two nights ago. I was 100 pages in when I got home from work yesterday. It is 450 pages. I finished it by 11 a.m. Project Hail Mary by Andy Ware? Yeah, the same guy who did The Martian and Artemis. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, I'm downloading Artem- it now. It's on Aud- it's on Audible, and I've got a bunch of Audible credits I need to use up before they expire. So, all right. It's real good. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Sponsor us, Andy. Where more than <laughs> I think I liked it more than sponsor us. Audible, give yeah. Bezos, give us the money. Hell yeah! But don't because then we lose Goon Squad. <laughs> I, although I guess with Bezos money, maybe we buy Goon Squad. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So time dilation, fun stuff. They've got three months of food on the Odyssey before they run out, which is their concern now. Makes me crazy because this is a much bigger ship than the Prometheus. Yeah. We see dozens of crew people. Did they just have a weekend's worth of food? That's well, what I was curious it, about. Like, does the three months supply consider the entire crew or did they just do the math and that's what would be just you will, with them? I'm sure that there's know. enough food for everyone for a couple of weeks but it's all perishable we like see them in fridges with like fresh fruit and stuff Mm. and so it's probably not that there wasn't enough food for all of those people for several weeks it's probably that it won't last past a certain point i just they don't have deep freezers yeah i just know like i've I've seen enough submarine stuff where i i just know you know you've got your layers of stuff You've got, hey, we're two weeks out of out of dock. We still have fruits and veggies. And then you have, we've been under the ocean for six months. Uh, we are just eating potted meat. And was everything was originally just packed into a corner in a bathroom because you just shove every possible, you know, ounce of space with food so you can stay out as long as you possibly can. And so I'm just like, there's so much, like, hallway space on this spaceship Mm -hmm. like they could have had a lot more food they need like this is how we know they're air force guys and not navy guys yeah (laughs) so we get a little bit here vela has the best line when they're talking about their survivability options and she's just like i'm going to go crazy and i'm bringing you with me hell yeah yeah. (laughs) classic vela yeah uh, once again, Ben, yes, we know this person. Yes. <laughs> and we see Mitchell's response is to embrace his inner Forrest Gump. Yep. I just felt like running. I just felt like running. And we have some brief vignettes where we find out, one, Carter just invented the replicator. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so, hey, we don't have to worry about food now. That's been solved. 
Uh, two, uh, two things you, I'd like to bring you, up here you've real still, quick. You've, you've removed scarcity. <laughs> yeah. Two things I want to bring up about, about this Carter and her computer genius. I mean, one, the Asgard computer that they installed there is it's full of crystals. It's it's carryable no, crystals. We crystals. see their size. <laughs> it's a big, massive. It looks like a pipe organ made of crystals, and it's the computer. And the computer she uses to interface with the magic crystal Asgard computer is a Dell XPS. <laughs> you know, I did. It is specifically a military issue Dell XPS due to the extra shock. Well, so it is a military or construction grade laptop. So these are laptops. But it has blue LED lights on the outside. <laughs> so these laptops are the yeah. ones that have the giant thick rubber on the outside. Yeah. So they are extra durable. This was a, a thing in the 2000, 2010s where you would have military or construction grade laptops or even some early cell phones that were just encased in heavy rubber. Yeah. Like that was going to save them. Right. My, my uncle had one as a, an oil truck driver. Yeah. yeah, just the lights on the side gave me those Alienware vibes, like with the big blue bright <laughs> XPS. Like, ah oh, man, brought me back. Yeah. I have a question for you guys right now, and I oh, we, we almost talked about it before the episode started, and I told everybody to shut up. I want to talk about it now, recorded for posterity. Yeah, we, I mean, a little pre-pod vamp is fine, yeah. but we should save the good stuff for radio. We try. Well, and also, pre-pod I came up vamp. with I came up with a bit. I wanted to, to do it, so give me the bits. Oh, let's do the bit. Uh, do the bit. Give me the just the bits, Ben. Just the bits. You guys are trapped on the Odyssey. How okay. long do you think you make it? Like, how oh, long I'm do fine. you think you, you get through it mentally? If I've got the replicator machine that can give me whatever I want, dude, this is heaven for me, man. <laughs> Away from people, whatever food I want, whatever fucking entertainment I want, I can probably go for, I don't know, five, ten years. I you know what my fine. Steam backlog looks like? Yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> what if you don't yeah. have your Steam backlog? Just, well, then I'm I'm out the airlock after, you know, I'm like, I'm done, I'm out. <laughs> so one of the plot points in the book I just read is effectively this question. So it's very fresh on my mind because of just like, okay, well, you are going to survive in a spaceship with a couple of other people or by yourself for X amount of time, right? Mm-hmm. You have all of this stuff to keep you preoccupied is that still something that you want to do like it's an important question to ask and so i think i would be fine i would 100 percent uh, pick up instruments i would practice my depreciated music skills that yeah. i'm sure have atrophied and get them back and then also just learn because i used to be able to play 13 different musical instruments like i i can't play maybe two now maybe maybe i could do two two or three I could probably handle trombone and trumpet still. It'd take some work to get my omnisher back, but Did you do? Uh, yeah, but like, yeah, I haven't played a bassoon since high school. Like, you know, there's some shit there that's been a long time. So I would, that did you redo? Yeah, I replicate that. I'd be digging for sure. <laughs> I I've got a lot of things that I could do to occupy myself mentally and get my a skill set back that I wish I hadn't let atrophy like I had. I'm fine. How about you, Ben? Well, sorry, I'm right. I just for some reason my brain jumped to a uh uh a, a didgeridoo cover of Dragula because you're gonna ditch through the ditches. <laughs> 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 God, that, would be that has to exist that has to exist i hope so <laughs> if it exists there's a drop of it right now and if it doesn't someone go make it <laughs> uh i know it just made me think of during my summers in college my roommates all went home and so i had the apartment completely to myself and i was working part-time at a target and i remember having a like a thursday and i hadn't had to work in a couple of days and I realized I haven't spoken in three days and I was fine. <laughs> uh, so I've also had the thought and it's, it's, you know, further from my mind now since like I've had my son and everything, but like, okay, what would happen if like my wife passed away and I'm just like, I'd probably go live in a monastery and I'd be fine. And so, you know, I think I would, I would be perfectly happy in this sort of situation that said we are three people who like do podcasts and stuff which is like hey how can i have some social interaction with you in a computer screen 
where I don't have to like <laughs> be here and we can be like, all right, and we're done. Close the window. <laughs> yeah. Well, this this makes this brings up a good point about the the replicator device that Carter invented. I was just thinking just now. I was like, yeah, I've been through time. I've, I've actually haven't been through times where I've gone a few days without talking to anyone because I have my dog and my three cats. I talk to them all the time. <laughs> so I'm like, if this replicator can make me a dog, that's important. I I, I got to have my puppy in my life. So. <laughs> if it can make a dog, I have other questions. <laughs> Good point. If if it's making dog, then is it making people? And what are their brains Let's like? Go there. I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to open up that can of worms. But we see how our crew, our SG one team, try and handle their isolation and. Some of them do maintenance and self-improvement. It does feel like, though, that, like, for the most part, they just kind of leave Carter alone to try and solve the problem. Yeah. But we also find out Vala shows up at Dan Jack's uh, room with fuzzy handcuffs before they invent the replicator, which means she just had them. <laughs> you know, and, and when Dan Jackson immediately just shuts the door in her face when she shows up like that, I'm going to say it's not because he wasn't completely against the idea it was the handcuffs that triggered him because for the past 10 years he's been imprisoned every single week <laughs> so he's just like <laughs> handcuffs no <laughs> <laughs> yeah we get some stuff we see some ambu jitsu that goes a little too hard here and this kind of montage ends with dan jackson kind of just being a complete asshole to vala he oh goes God, too he hard such a dick yeah i mean we don't know their history in particular he definitely seems to be of the mind that she is interested in him to pass the time not which she and is to actually fuck with interested him. in him yeah. yeah which is reasonable but he just goes full bag on her man yeah like, it's right i i could i i'm maybe rationalizing a little bit but not really because he's gone space crazy being isolated for three months so I'm just hoping this is not normal Daniel Jackson behavior, <laughs> but still it's yeah. like he yeah, makes her start crying. Oh my God. It was, and then immediately, yeah. and well, then immediately, immediately he's like, okay, first, never mind. We'll, we'll first drop bangs. in a damn Daniel. <laughs> I don't know what Daniel is, but... <laughs> oh, it's an, an old like YouTube. Damn Daniel. <laughs> yeah. But then he's like, wait a minute, you're crying. You actually meant this. And then what do they do? Pound yeah. town. They bug it. They squish. That was yeah. yeah. It was just a little uncomfortable how quickly he did the heel turn there. That was yeah, that entire scene was was it, it was very emotionally whiplashy. Yes. Yeah. And it's the sort of thing where it's we have ten more minutes. Like you could <laughs> you could spend more time here. Like this could have been a oh, forty yeah. minute episode. Yeah. You know, this was a forty minute episode. Mm -hmm. This is a forty four minute episode, Ben. This is standard Stargate. <laughs> the same length as all of the other episodes. Oh, it showed me thirty. No. Nope. Can confirm 43 minutes, 34 seconds. Oh, that's yeah. weird. Okay. I don't know why I watched it on my phone and it showed me 31 minutes. Well, I was, I was somewhat curious. Uh, you watched about... it on your phone? You think you've experienced cinema <laughs> on your phone? Uh, a fucking tragedy. It's a, such a sadness that you think you've seen a film on your fucking telephone. Get real. David Lynch. Well, one thing that dude. really surprised he can call me when he makes <laughs> a piece of art. Oh, so you're not a fan of the original Dune, huh? No. <laughs> the original Dune, but that Dune, it was pretty terrible, <laughs> but anyway. Back to the show, what really surprised me here through this watch through is the cameo from Jim Gaffigan, where he just suddenly shows up and starts talking about how being, being a dad on vacation, you look like someone who lost a bet. And then I realized that my ad free version of Amazon Prime had expired. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if everyone else I, is seeing the same ads, but it just I really... got the same ad. I was <laughs> upset. It, it it's uh, this uh, this is the first time I've watched anything on Amazon since the last episode we recorded. And <laughs> ads had come in since then and so the first ad that played was an ad telling me that there were going to be ads on amazon prime now. <laughs> and that was viscerally upsetting oh so it's for everyone i just thought my because i canceled me... a bunch of my subscriptions last month for no stuff it's I don't use. you have to pay yeah. three dollars a month now to not get ads i don't care it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. yeah the only problem i've ever had was i watched the adventures of briscoe county jr on IMDb TV uh, years ago. I've and about that one. Core memory unlocked. 
<laughs> great show. Babylon Amazing 5 was show. on IMDb TV for a while. Uh, yeah. And have ads. And I didn't care. I was watching Briscoe County Jr. The problem was it would ha- play like three ads every ad break. And it was and the, the same. same no, the same mm-hmm. single ad. Oh, so oh, they do it back to back. That's yeah. The worst. So in yeah. one episode of The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr., I watched like the same like Charmin ad nine times. It was just like, OK, I hate this. I hate this yeah. so much. Like, streaming TV has been a thing for over a decade now, and they still haven't figured out how to shuffle their ads properly. Like, what the hell, man? Yeah. Ugh. Anyway. Now, I have a problem here, here guys. Uh, Mitchell. Are you mad? I was gonna say, I'm a little mad. Go ahead. Ben. If you want to put the drop in here, I'm, <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm, I will say I'm mad. <laughs> have you ever gotten it, like been watching a sci-fi show and you solve the problem infinitely yeah. before the, 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 the cast does? And in this case, yeah. they never actually like they never solve the problem of the laser beam about to hit them. Mm. Yeah. Well, they they turn the laser beam problem into a laser beam solution, <laughs> which you know what I can but, appreciate. But yes, you've got no, time. What was your solution, Ben? You've got infinite resources now. You've got transporters and uh and fighters. Build a giant shield out there. Just put yeah. no put put the fighter in the way of the laser beam. Beam the pilot yep. back. The laser beam hits it, explodes. Doesn't matter. Mm. Didn't hit the big ship. We shoot away. It is build a giant mirror so the laser reflects back at the ship that shot it. At. <laughs> Just move eight inches. <laughs> well, they can't move. That's fine. But you know, yeah, I can, I, I can, I can be, I can be cool with that. Like the time dilation field has requires them to stay in the same spot. But yeah, that's a good yeah, point. Just you put could, their, put the fighter there. A big fucking yeah. titanium umbrella. Yep. <laughs> yeah. There, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but are probably we do a get different ways to get it. my favorite thing in the entire Giant episode. Military makes me so rubber. happy. What's that? Which part? we get Creedence. We get a montage with some Creedence Clearwater oh, Revival. God, that was my least. <sighs> yeah, we get some CCR. I, I'm sorry, I love Excellent Creedence. use of CCR. That is all you guys. I, I just doesn't do anything for me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but I, I won't We, we get a young. montage <laughs> while Have You Ever Seen the Rain Plays? We see Man. the general tend the gardens, the crew working on their issues. We see some time passing. Mitchell uh, destroys his like room. Celebrate a Christmas and stuff. Mitchell destroys yeah. his room. He has big fifis. He's the type of guy who's punched a hole in the wall of every apartment he's ever lived on. Back on <laughs> Damn it, Kyle. <laughs> we see Vela. I'm I'm hoping process some trauma. I'm hoping that's what's going on in that scene. Is she's like on the floor crying. Yeah, well, she's she's sad because that, her so. daughter moved into a different galaxy. Yeah. That's what I figured was it. Uh, or maybe she's just going space crazy from being confined to this fucking space station yeah. with no sunlight for God knows how many years. So... And then nothing interesting happens for 19 years. So well, we just skip ahead. But we know that they can <laughs> but we know that they can replicate plants because we see that Landry has new plants. So I'm going to say mm-hmm. yeah. This time on during our time <laughs> skip, what happened here with Vala crying, she replicated herself some Mary, Mary Jane. She's got the reefer madness. What are y'all doing in here? We're smoking reefer. And you don't want no part of this shit. Yeah. So they're all olds now. They're not super olds, but they're mm. olds. This is really good aging makeup in the tw- in the twenty year time jump. Okay, I, I was I was thoroughly impressed with the aging makeup from the twenty year time jump, but unfortunately, this is a very short scene. We see the general die of old age, and then we skip ahead another thirty years. Yep. Yeah. And when we hit the fifty year olds, the 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 fifty years plus. This is when the a- a- aging makeup is miserable. Yeah. It's it's slightly better uh, than like the... that a- Admiral from the first season of TNG. Yeah. I mean, that's the bar for shitty aging makeup, and they they do clear it, but just barely. He Harder... gets gray hairs on one spot on his head. <laughs> yes. He <laughs> gets a little a rogue thing. streak going on. Carter has finally figured out the, prop, the solution, but there's not enough power. Yeah, she figured out time Mitchell... travel, but she's just like, we don't have the batteries for it. Yeah. Which, uh, let me just bring it, when, when Carter brings it up, and they're all having their, their dinner together, and when Carter brings it up, they've been there for 50-some-odd years, and they're still eating off those god-awful cafeteria trays for dinner. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> you can replicate anything. Get some new Get a bowl. Water. No soups. 50 years, no soups. <laughs> so, they Mitchell figures to use the incoming blast as the power source. One of them will have to stay old, though, and the rest <laughs> will die. 
and I'm just like sitting here, my points, my points, my points. <laughs> and then Teal'c is all like, me. And I'm all like, damn it, that makes sense though. Well, mm. yeah, because apparently Jaffa live like way longer. And so yeah. it's mm. the, the whole like Carter being like, it only makes sense for it to be me. And it's like, he's going to live to 500. This yeah. is less of a problem for him. Like, come on. Yeah. Why did? Why was there any sort of, like, we get, like, some back and forth where Mitchell's like, no, it'll be me. It do, like, you can go back and have your youth. And so it's just like, why not the guy who's going to be 500? Why not the guy yeah. that this isn't most of your life? It, it seemed yeah. very obvious to me that it was going to be Teal. So while I cry for my points, I do appreciate <laughs> them making the right decision. They do the thing. Teal goes back in time, stops the bubble from happening. And then they hyperdrive back to Earth as they get away because they can disconnect the drive and just jump away now. Mm-hmm. And see, this is the, the uh, other part that got me really mad because we <laughs> see that they're able to send Teal'c back with a crystal that like instantly disconnects the the Ori thing so they can jump away. Yeah. But he's got another hand. And Carter, you invented time travel. And, right. Uh, and, and replicators. And rep- jacks. you've spent... 50 years studying the the Asgardian database. Oh, yeah. Like, you don't have to write down yeah. everything, but you could send back some Cliff's notes. Like, hey, yeah. dudes. Well, well they've, still, they've still got the Asgardian database. Yeah, but, but we don't have his 50, 50 years, years of, of like, time. of okay, research yeah. notes. That's a good point. That's a good point, yeah. It's just like, he's got yeah. two hands, plus all of his pockets. <laughs> pockets! Give me pockets! We go back to Cheyenne Mountain, and Vala is just begging Teal for the hot goss. <laughs> She's like, I know I, it was 50 years. I boned someone. <laughs> Which one of you was it? <laughs> the thing is, she doesn't, like, I, I actually think it's kind of telling that she doesn't list Dan Jax in the, uh, the mm, list. Yeah. Because she knows. She knows, she knows it was him. And so she lists mm-hmm. all the people. She's like, was it you, Muscle? Uh, was, it, w- was it Landry? <laughs> and she knew she knew she yeah. knew and i find it surprising that teal has had this weird prime directive thing going on there's no reason for it yeah i don't know why she he... even she even explains that there's no reason for yeah. it and he's just all like nope yeah. that's for me but i can see it, that it, being part of teal's personality but it just seems weird that he's so maybe he just doesn't want to talk to her <laughs> well this is not the only thing driving me crazy here so besides teal deciding to keep this a secret for no reason other than his own gratification <laughs> shouldn't young teal still be there Wait. they sent old teal back in time they don't say anything about his like sending his consciousness we see his physical body get transported back in time where's young teal we, we should have teal and twil <laughs> and we don't we just have old teal <laughs> what the actual hell that that was very upsetting. Maybe that's in the movies. Yeah, it does feel like they I, I, I really wanted two Teal'ks walking into the Stargate at the end. Old Teal'c and current Teal. <laughs> and also, like, so they didn't do a great job of explaining, like, hey, if we send you back, it replaces your old self. They will be gone. Because yeah. if you're able to, like, create that time bubble, put, you know, everybody in the time bubble. You know, why are you only sending back one person? You know, and, you know. Hey, if if we're able to stop what happened and everybody's going to live their lives normally, what what would the you know the SGC be like if we had our main characters plus old versions of them, and like, hey, we can you know have the Carters work on a problem together. You know? <laughs> well, they say there's the issue is the size of the bubble and the power that oh, they okay. have. One per- they yeah. can only fit one person. Yeah, they, they, oh, they, yeah, they did explain that. that. You're right. So. We should have two teals. Damn it! <laughs> and then they just ramble a bunch of parables at each other before going somewhere. Now, why? When? Okay, in this final scene, they go up to the Stargate, and Crichton points at the Stargate and says, "That's the thing we're going to use to travel the galaxy light years away." Like he's explaining it for the first time. I'm pretty sure he's used a Stargate before. So, and everyone mm-hmm. in that room has used a Stargate before. I didn't understand. He doesn't that like being on spaceships. He, he there's a few lines referencing it in in the episode where he's just like, "I hate being here on this ship. I'm I'm a fighter pilot. I want freedom. Oh, right. Giant spaceships do not give me this. I hate this. I feel trapped. You know, let me walk somewhere. Let me use a Stargate. It's a little bit. It's still, Which, still is very odd to me. I don't, don't also, understand that. Also, weird thing. Didn't the Prometheus have a Stargate on it? Or did they have to teleport to it? They, 
they had to teleport to a Stargate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever they, they had made mention of having to teleport to planets near the Prometheus and then get picked up. Okay. Because yeah. we know that Gould ships can have Stargates on them. And it's just like, yes. why didn't, why didn't yeah, you do no that? There's no reason they couldn't just put a Stargate inside the ship. There's plenty of Stargates all over the universe, apparently. So just, just grab, grab one, one and throw it in the ship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially now that they, like, they've got, like, big nice spaceships that can like mm. fly anywhere like go back to that that slavery planet and be like you guys are not allowed yeah, to well, have this <laughs> Boy, you're dicks yeah you can uh, have so it back episode... once you've proven your your responsible <laughs> <laughs> so then the so then the episode ends with the team sharing the wisdom of the asgard computer which is apparently just a bunch of fortune cookie things fortune cookie yep. lines yep and that's it that that's Stargate. And also, is it just me, or did Teal look stoned AF in the final episode, in the final scene? He has to smoke for his glaucoma, dude. That's not cool. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> Teal. It's a medical condition, okay? Yeah, say his eyes were bloodshot, and he was like, I "Indeed, I have discovered <laughs> fish. No, the other fish. <laughs> the pH. pH. Fish. <laughs> jam jam bands are humanity's greatest accomplishment. Indeed." <laughs> <laughs> so now would now would be the point where we roll some dice yeah but we don't no we don't no dice rolls any roll some dice anyway just to make sure. you feel better <laughs> sure i'll roll some dice just for you Phil. yeah Let's see. 4d6 and 1d4 what yeah do we what do we got what do we got Let's see 8 10 16 damn that seems to be what you roll every time i've got all of my my dice here from dungeon mastering <laughs> uh Looks to be about 120. So we're skipping our next show. <laughs> so we do have some predictions from last week, which we can go over. Let me uh, head down to the uh, lab, get the results here. Yeah, find out what those fucking lying lab rats have been saying. Oh my god, yeah. So, how many how many bastards voted for this? Let me see here. 15 <laughs> votes from people who said O'Neill returns for the series finale. What the fuck? Ah! They might have thought we meant a movie, perhaps. Maybe. That's what I'm thinking. There, there must be a wrap-up movie at the end. And there are they, two. Yeah. Well, because yeah, they haven't two. solved the Ori problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ori are still out there. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, but... we're just talking about SG-1, not the movies, not the other shows. Doesn't count. We yeah. know it. We know he doesn't show up in this episode because we watched it. Mm -hmm. So no points. I did get 17, 17 votes for Teal'c Becomes the King of the Jaffa. I'm, I'm guessing... Maybe I don't know if that does that happen in the movie as well. If so if so, then this one doesn't count. I I'm don't know. hoping that I, honestly, I thought it was going to be like an old Spock thing where old Teal'c goes to lead the Jaffa and young yeah. Teal'c stays with SG One, and then there was just the one Teal'c for no reason. <laughs> Moving on to Jaffer's predictions, which are Carter dies, Teal'c dies, O'Neill dies. You did get Carter one dies. Carter dies. Yes, Carter, Carter dies in this episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that brings me up to forty six, possibly forty eight. Yeah, let's see. Vala steals a bunch of loot. We did get six votes for that, and I'm, I, I'm that pretty happened. sure that. I, I don't that care that if happens. we saw it or not. That happened. Yeah. <laughs> that, that happened. Yeah. And and your prediction of we missed at least two big bads in our watch through. Now, I found a brilliant way to confirm this. I went to Screen Rant, and I found a one of their articles that is top 10 SG-1 villains ranked from best to worst. And I read through it. And sure enough, there were two faces and names I did not recognize at all. <laughs> the rest of them were on there. Anubis, Apophis, Bale, though they were all on the list. But there was one named Neritra, which I had no idea who the hell she was. And we did see the replicators. Well, we only that heard them referenced. We've never seen them. We only heard them referenced. We didn't see the replicators. So yeah, I was going to give you points for that. Vala's daughter. Guess who? Guess what actress is Vala's, da Vala's daughter? Yeah. I'm uh, guessing someone famous. Yeah, it's I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but Morena Bakar from famously portrayed Deadpool's girlfriend. Oh, Marina Bakarin? Uh, yes, that's yeah. wow, I'm terrible. Oh. <laughs> also That's Vala's daughter, Firefly. She's the same age. Yes, <laughs> which totally confirms the time travel my, thing. I sh I should have made this a prediction that no, I I'm th I'm thinking she was genetically engineered or fucked with by the Ori to rapidly become an adult. Marina Bakar totally should have made that a prediction. Also in the the new version of V, right? V, yep. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, Fair stuff. And there, there was one more big bad listed. It was, they didn't actually, I don't think this person actually had a name, but it was the Ori prior, like we know the Ori use humans and other species to do their bidding, and that's what the priors are. Mm-hmm. But the, the Alpha prior, okay, I, I, I want you guys to each give me one guess. It was an, an actor who was in a famous 90s sci-fi show. Give me a guess. You'll never guess. An actor from a famous 90s sci-fi show? Yeah. Is actor gender specific here? I'll leave it ambiguous. Okay. Because my gut said Kate Mulgrew. There wasn't even 90s Voyagers. Well, no, it was, it was, it was no, Voyager was 90s. 90s. Yeah. Did it? Okay. No, because... What uh, do you think, Ben? Enterprise was the early 2000s. Going yeah, that's right. To go, yeah, because remember, they go back to 1997 in Voyager. I'm going to go with Michael Dorn. I don't know, good guess. It was it was the Cancer Man from the X-Files. The Cancer Man? Cool. Never would have guessed that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who that is. I've never seen an X-File. Guy. Oh, oh! Okay. oh, well, there goes that. Okay. So, yeah, that was fun. All uh, right. What all about right. my last prediction? Moving on. Uh, Vala's, daughter betra- uh, Vala's daughter betrays the Ori and saves the day. That, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. does not look like it's only got two votes, and one of them was from the guy who votes on everything every single time. All right. But Well, that only gets me to 42. For my final proof. Yeah. But I did technically get my other prediction. This was was my evening of Vala sacrifices herself in the finale. That technically happened. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, yeah. 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 My Your issue is with sacrifices, but yeah, she does She does knowingly go to death, mm-hmm. so good enough. Along with everyone else, yep, yep, she, yep. She doesn't really do anything about it, she just kind of hangs out and dies, but yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, it wasn't the blaze of glory I was hoping for, but uh, you know, it still still counts. Burn on that old crew. The only things they did better than us were suck and die. You know, one, one thing I did like about uh, the, the show was during the passing of time, shots how it showed the ori laser beam getting, getting closer just a little bit closer after 10 years that was pretty cool I yeah like that. Mm-hmm. but so that's our episode <laughs> okay well we'll be back next week to find out what we got right what we got wrong and everything in between as we do our stargate sg1 recap and we read through a synopsis of the all 10 seasons it will probably be a long ass episode yeah but That's our next one. And then after that, we'll go back and watch one that we missed. But until all of that happens, we do have to, of course, say thank you. Thanks, right, for letting us use Goon Squad as our theme music. We appreciate the hell out of it. We love that song. Thank you so much. You can find Ripe's music all over streaming services, and they just announced a bit of a summer tour. So go check them out. And uh, thank you to everyone in the Dominion Media TV Research Lab for your Lies! Y'all of you are getting a participant ribbon for this. <laughs> and if you like our show, please feel free to leave us a five-star review on iTunes or Facebook, and we'll give you a shout-out here on the show. Thank you very much. And if you don't like our show, well, just you know, keep that shit to yourself. And thank you to Annette Lucina for your photograph of a television that we have used as our, our podcast artwork. Thank you for making free art so we can make free art. And we'll see you next time on Last Time On.